So, uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Dmitry Yarnishi. I'm with the research scientist with Canada Border Services Agency, also working with the University of Ottawa as a junk professor there. And we're trying to build some community and some expertise in R and data science. And so today we're uh, going to finish our uh, development of our first app, our first really uh, tool, which allows us to get data from a public repository and then visualize it in such a way automatically that it will be helpful, meaningful to all of us. Now, the logistics is the following. You can answer questions uh, directly right now if you are watching this uh, tutorial online or you can, because uh, you, you can contact me later, this uh, video will be posted on uh, YouTube and you can ask me questions uh, uh, at, uh, uh, on YouTube. Or, or just by my okay I see people more arri more people arriving so let me just uh, let uh, all of them uh, see what is the button here okay so we're getting more people here okay so I'm sharing the screen with you right now you should be seeing uh, the welcome page to our Ottawa community portal and uh, this is what we're going to do today so we will complete the app today. Uh, it, it is our sixth session. And the first two sessions were really about sort of uh, computer programming techniques, skills, how to, you can arrange your code, how you can track it uh, and divide it in block and execute one block at a time. And we'll go through that again today. So uh, the I will click right here on uh, R101. And this is what we'll be doing today. Based on what we have done last time. So I will recap our key uh, takeaways from last uh, Wednesday. Essentially, we talked about how we're going to arrange our code. First, we will we'll be working with you only in one project in our rstudio.cloud portal. So that's in here. And if you're not there, you can go there right now. And I have already opened it. And when you open it, this is what you would have. You would have a screen which would have a list of your projects. So we will be coding all our lunch and learn sessions in R101. So I'm clicking there. Now, in uh, this page, in R101 page, you would see I have uh, uh, now provided here instructions on how we're going to arrange our code. All our codes will be in uh, the folder R101. So I will click it here. And we discussed it last time that we will be only again modifying the codes which we have written last time. But all modifications Okay. okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have to apologize. You see, it happens. It happens. I was talking for five minutes and I was muted somehow again. I don't know how it happened. So uh, let me start again. 
uh, this session will be short. It will be not maybe 40 minutes. It will be 30 minutes. So I will start from, from here again. So uh, my name is Dmitry Garibnichi. I'm with the research scientist with Canada Border Services Agency. I hope you can hear me now. And uh, I'm sharing with you the screen right now. So we always start with the two pages. Page one page is called uh, our Ottawa uh, Learning Art Together portal. And the other page is uh, our studio cloud. So again, please let me know if there's any problem with the sound <laughs> because that was uh, really a, um, a special um, talking to, to myself. But at least you can uh, see the screen, right? So that's where we are right now. We are developing with you together uh, app, which will uh, visualize COVID data, which we are downloading from uh, John Hopkins University repository. So all the information is here on the portal. Uh, here we, you would see uh, we have links to the previous sessions. Uh, now, again, this, these are live uh, sessions. I don't have an actual script there, and sometimes we do have glitches. So uh, bear with me, and uh, hopefully every time it will be uh, better. So we talked about the logistics. We will be only, only editing these two files, one R script and one R markdown. Now, I'm going to my R101 project. You can change the name of your project in here. And I see people uh, uh, still arriving, so I'll need to admit more more people here. Uh, so uh, again, if you are uh, joining us later, it's okay because the session will be recorded and you will be able to catch up later. So we are coding in uh, R101 project and we have only uh, two files. Now you can get the sources of this file from this R101 directory. So these are two files which I will be going with you to now together, okay? And uh, really I have to watch uh, uh, my watches. Uh, so uh, that's what we have. We have two files here. These are exactly the same file as in here. But I will execute it one line at a time, okay? So if there is any question, you can ask me uh, right away in the chat box, please. So let's do that. I will clean my environment. You see, I'm cleaning with the broom here. So it's clean uh, because I have uh, tested it. Uh, it works, it's fine, but I would really like to start from the scratch. So I'm assuming myself, it's like you right now. You just copied that file into this uh, R Studio Cloud. And that's what you have right now. Now, we talked about the importance of having a table of content here. You can open this table of content in, uh, in here. Look at this button. And it's very important, very important, because it allows you to keep track of uh, your code. Because when your code becomes bigger than one screen, you do need to keep track of that. Another very important technique is writing code in blocks. So, for example, I have a block, and I would like to execute it right away in one uh, click. So that's what we will be doing now. I put my cursor here. Look, it doesn't matter where. And then I press Control Enter. So at the bottom of the screen, you see in the console what has been executed. So these libraries have been opened. Now, all the libraries which we need, if you don't have them yet, you would have to install it. And to install it, it's in here, tools, install, packages and we've done it in our first uh, three sessions so please uh, just go back to our recordings and you can see how we're doing it now we don't have any variables yet so we will create our first variable and you will see how it will change our environment environment window here so now we have a, ver a variable called total which has a value combined now let's go to our first function which we have created with you last time uh, again, we will uh, have to, uh, I will have to refer people to our last session to, to uh, show you how we have uh, built this function. But essentially what this function is doing, we will execute it. 
and it will take the data, all this huge data uh, from uh, John Hopkins University, and it will find only those. Look, we're taking this data on the date max, which is maximum date. Okay, let me, uh, there's some questions here. It's really Okay, so this fun, uh, this function indeed uh, it was not uh, this function is not in the session five, it is in the session six, because session six it's what we are doing uh, right now with you. So last time, what we have done, uh, we have uh, essentially created this function with you. So I will go again. We will do it together with you right now. Uh, I'll go back to this function, but let's uh, execute a function which reads geographical data. And you can go line by line, and that's what we've done with you last time. This function reads data. Next function reads uh, COVID data. So geo uh, function reads uh, uh, geographical data, and then potentially we can write another function here which will do everything, which will read everything and which will compute everything we want. And this is like a placeholder for you. And uh, you would see here, we talked about the layout uh, of the R Studio. So you have a uh, environment win window here and uh, you also have uh, files and plots and help in here. So if there's any question at any point, what let's say uh, this merge function is doing, you can type it in here, merge and uh, it will, show you exactly not just help but example on how to to run this function it's a, a data table function which uh, we looked at you uh, in our session uh, three I believe so now we are testing it it's very important we test it line at a time before we go into our our R markdown so we're testing it Look, uh, we run the function. I just go line at a time. I put my cursor here, I press control enter and uh, it will print it. Now, sometimes it does not print right away. You need to do it again because I found there is a sort of a, a log, like a, it, there is a delay there. I will make this window larger. So when you print a data table, it prints the, the first five lines and the last five lines. And again, I talked about the importance of using data table. This is a very powerful uh, package. It's better than a classical uh, data frame because it has more functionalities and they'll show more of uh, what you can do with data table. So we talked about exploring the data. For example, we found that there is no city called New York. Instead, it's called New York City. So, and we're fixing it, we are renaming New York City into New York. Now we're reading COVID data. We're reading it, we're printing it. Now we are computing the maximum date. So that's the date when it was last time updated. So today we're 22nd of May, the database was updated yesterday. Now we're removing one column, we don't need it. Now we can explore a little more what this uh, data set is. And uh, it shows you the cities for New York. This is how you can retrieve a particular column from your data set, column called city for a state equal uh, New York. So then, uh, that's what we were doing with you uh, in the previous two sessions. We did this. We looked at, uh, I'm just going line at a time. So we found the top three places where, so you, you see how we've done it. We've taken this, we executed it. And by the way, you can highlight and you can press control enter, control enter right now, I'm pressing it. And it shows you the data, the data set for date max. 
Now I can order it by confirm. And you see I'm using a minus sign. Uh, so control enter here. So it has ordered it. You see it has ordered it by number of confirmed cases a day. And then we can take the top three out of this. You see, that's what we're doing. Okay, I incidentally click delete, delete. So let's do it again. I'm putting my cursor, control enter. Okay, then I found my top three cities. And then uh, that's how I extract, look, from this entire data set, I have extracted only data for my three top cities. And then we've taken the entire portion, this portion, and converted it into, in, into a function, remember? And you can jump into that function right here using, using the table of content, right? So very useful function, and we will be using it later. Now, let's go back to uh, computing some stats using data table package. So we talked about merging data. So this is how you merge COVID data with geographical data. It's like you say, for geographical data, take only DT, and DT is in here, and you merge it by these three columns. Okay, then we talked about plotting. And uh, you can see that you can also assign a plot to a variable, a variable G. And then when you execute G, you, you see I put a cursor on G and I press Control Enter. And it would execute this uh, plot. Now, we can now plot for all three cities. Now, little uh, uh, enhancement from uh, where we were last time with you. Look, because what I've done here, I have reordered. Last time, we just had facet city, and it would plot just by city. Now I say reorder city by location, by longitude. So now they're ordered by longitude. Now, you can do it you can do it in a different way. You can sort it by confirmed, uh, actually. And that's what I'm doing uh, later in, uh, in my other script. Uh, and even more, you can do, you can uh, do it, look, scales, parameter scales. By the way, what I'm doing right now is a very important, is a very useful trick called uh, commenting out and commenting in. It's Control Shift C. And another shortcut, very important shortcut, uh, is a uh, uh, Control E. So, for example, you're typing something, and you would like to make sure it's uh, there is no orthographic uh, errors. You would like to indent it automatically. Control E. Oh, I, sorry, control I, it's called control I. And it automatically would uh, indent all your text. So now if I run it again, you see that each of those plots for each city has its own scale right now. But they're sorted, they're sorted right now by, uh, they're sorted by long uh, longitude. And in fact, we can sort them if we want by confirmed. So we can execute it again. Now I'm watching time here. So this is how they are sorted right now from least infected to most, most uh, infected. Uh, okay, if you want to change the order from most infected to least infected, you would put a minus here. I will execute it. And it has changed the order. Now, we talked about uh, this function which allows you to save the image. And we have
I've said it last time and you see the images right here. Now let's talk about doing some statistics, some computations with the data table package. Let's see what, this, uh, what these lines are doing. This would com compute some total sum of all confirmed by city. Uh, now uh, the same for deaths. And we can have another function which uh, is a filter. It's like a filter you take a mean of three days. Because we talked about that, that data could have noise and you do need a filter, what is called a um, convolution filter. If you want to compute a derivative, for example, like a speed or acceleration, you do need to, uh, to filter it over a period of time. That's how you do it. So now a better way of doing it, instead of doing it for each line for each column, you can say, I'd like to do the same function with these columns. And even more, you can create uh, separate columns later, which will be called total and speed, for example. And then look what is happening here. So this, what it does, it applies a function sum to all columns which are defined here. So that's what data table is very powerful in doing. Uh, it can take the entire set of columns and you can do the same function on all columns and it does it very efficiently. Now you can write your own function right now, filter. Look, you can understand what this filter is doing here. It just takes an average of two numbers. Essentially, it takes array or a vector and it computes the average of the last two numbers. You see? So if you want, you can uh, have uh, this function executed for the, your entire data set or your column. And that's what it is doing here. Now, we'd like to do it for each city or for each state later. So you add this by, and look what is happening here. Control enter, and it now it tells you confirmed uh, statistics, confirmed and death statistics for each city. Now, what you would like to do, you would like to rename them, right? Because now these are not just confirmed, these are total. And we're using this pipeline uh, operator. It was in our first session when I said that this is your second best friend. The first best friend is data table. The second best friend is this pipeline. So I have 10 minutes uh, left. So we will try to, uh, to finish in 10 minutes. So, uh, let me close this window. Okay. So, control enter, control enter, and the same here. So now I have uh, computed total and uh, uh, as speed. So this is how I'm computing speed, look. And uh, it gives me total, it gives me speed. And now if I want to, I can uh, merge them. The same way we merged last time geographical data with COVID data, you do it just like that. Look, so that's all your data. This is how you aggregate and you can add uh, more and more data. Wonderful. So that's all for now uh, about uh, this uh, R script. The last thing though, uh, we would like to be able to plot over time also total. So there is a function called uh, cumulative sum and we will execute it. And then we can plot it. Oops. Okay, let's. Uh, uh, and there are some questions questions here, so let's uh, just uh, find out what what is happening here. So uh, confirm total. Uh, confirm total. We have. Okay. Yeah. So we will. Uh, we will do it. So in here somewhere, we will need to do this line first. 
Okay, I'll get I got back I'll get back to this. So let let's run this line again. Let's uh, run this line again and see what what it says. So it says uh, this uh, uh, calls some not not found. Okay, look, and I'll show you why. Because it's in here. In the beginning, I called it call sum, and now it's called actually call call total. So it should be called call uh, total here. Okay. So, so now if uh, it's uh, what we have here, it's the same data table, which is aggregated data of geographical data and time series data, but we have added also cumulative deaths total, and now we can we can plot it. So we can plot it uh, for for the same three cities in uh, New York. Okay, so here it is. Now, uh, a question here. Uh, let me check the question. Okay, uh, so I will get, I'll get back to, so there are some questions. Uh, people are, have copied the file, but uh, they cannot get uh, any tables. Uh, so I'm, Okay, so uh, I'll get back maybe to that question. We'll try to figure out later. Now let's go to our script from our script to our markdown because now we will we'll be using the same function from our markdown. And last time we talked about how you can create your R markdown using file, new file, and R markdown. And in there, you can even say use template flex dashboard template and when you use template it would uh, add these three lines now i have commented out these three lines here and instead i've added a few other lines which uh, create a table of content of your report and what we will be doing here we will be doing exactly executing the, exactly the same lines so you can do it the same way as we've done it in our script, you put your cursor here. First, we'll go line by line. And then when we know everything works fine, we will click here in knit button. And it will compute the entire code. So uh, by the way, what I'm just thinking, it will take time to knit it. Uh, what we can do is um, I'll show you, I'll show you what this file actually is because I have already compiled it. It's, it creates HTML file. Look, I'm showing it in files. I click on HTML view in web browser. And this will be our report. Full automated report, uh, which automatically reads data and plots data for each, for each state. So you see, uh, for each state, it shows for uh, 10 or 12, I guess 12 worst cities, uh, the same, sort of the same graph. So let's try to do it now together. Okay, the question is, which version of the template in our markdown flex? Okay, now, Flex dashboard. At the moment, I'm not using Flex dashboard myself here. It's commented out. If you want to use it, you will have to to install it here using install packages in here. That's how how you you would install it. Flex. Like dashboard. 
So, and, and you will install it here. And then that, that would be the same version which uh, I'm using here. Now the versions you can, we, we can test versions later. But uh, I decided not to use Flex dashboard here because uh, it's a little next step. It's a little more advanced than just a report. So let's make sure that our report compiles just as HTML and then we will be able to uncomment this portion and create uh, the actual dashboard. But the difference between report and dashboard is that uh, report looks like HTML file and dashboard looks more like uh, one page. But the syntax is exactly the same. It will be exactly the same R markdown. It will be the, exactly the same code. So let's see what I'm doing here. Uh, one thing which I have not mentioned yet that when you want your code, uh, the output of your code to be included, you need to say include true. And by default, it's true. But when you don't want to, uh, the output to be included, you say include F in uh, chunk options, it's called. So this is what we're doing in here. Uh, we are creating here a for loop. We will be a for loop will be here, which will go through all states, and this is how you do a for loop in R. So uh, you create state in, and then you have just a list of all states, and then you can use uh, essentially cat means uh, concatenate, just print it exactly the way it is. And I use backslash n as a new line, and I say print state. And then for each print state, I can print some data and I can uh, reduce it to 12 cities and then I can plot it. So, and it does it in a uh, uh, for loop. Now, one more thing which I have uh, in included here is this function. Let's see what it is doing here. So, normally when you print data table, it just will be a text file, it's just a static file. But if you use a library DT, which I have, and you, if you don't have, you have to install it. You can do it like that. And then it will be uh, interactive table, so which you can sort yourself, you see? Just like that. So, and by the way, you can close it in here. So what is happening here? It's in R markdown, when you execute a line within a, uh, a chunk, it will show you the result right there instead of uh, elsewhere in a plot uh, windows. So that's what I'm doing in here. Look, I'm visualizing the data, the data tables. 